Let's uh, analyze these numbers now uh, with Mr. Paul Alages, Senior Economist, SBM Professionals. Good morning. Great to have you. Good. Yeah, so we see Naira in circulation, you know, has been on a steady rise since uh, 2016. Uh, what's stoking this? Well, uh, a number of a number of things are responsible for increasing money supply, and I can attribute three uh, major reasons to the increase in money supply. One of the reasons remains the Monetary Policy Committee has reduced policy interest rates (NPR) and has left it at 11.5 percent. Uh, that decision had made private sector uh, credit to increase significantly. Private sector credit has grew to 35. Uh, 0.73 trillion from 30.15 trillion. That's an increase with about 5.58 trillion. Again, we have also seen some intervention uh, we, uh, we, uh, by central banks, and of course, it, 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 it's quite a number of them, but not limited, limited to um, what, you, what you may want to call uh, the 75.99 billion naira support for cultivation of agri. Uh, different agri programs, especially the plantation of crops or seeds, which include rice, wheat, and, and, and of course, maize. So we've seen quite a number of decisions that have been taken by the Central Bank of Nigeria and also the Monetary Policy Committee in order for us to have significant growth. And the question is, uh, has this yielded the result that Central Bank was looking for in one hand, even though this had a trade-off effect or trade-off impact on the economy? I would say yes. Because when you look at GDP growth rate in Q2 and Q3, because that in 2020, Nigeria was in a recession, no thanks to COVID-19. But in 2021, in second quarter, GDP growth rate went to about 5%. And third quarter, which is still the report or the result we have, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, with about 4% GDP growth rate. It's not limited to that. We have also seen credit even to government sector has increased significantly. It has increased uh, from... 12.4 trillion to 13.73 trillion. So all of these had impact, of course, on on the economy, and that I think may be the reason why we have seen this significant increase in money in circulation to about 33.3 trillion after December 2021. Right, and uh, you know, I guess it's safe to say uh, this is why we have a double-digit inflation. Should we be worried here? Uh, yeah, we should um, we should be worried in the real sense. We should be worried uh, because when you look at double inflation, money supply is a major driver of inflation, even though we have also seen activity of central banks, uh, which includes um, um, open market operations in order to reduce uh, money in circulation. But we also look at quality of money, which is the argument most economists don't talk about. The quality of money or the quality of Naira, I beg your pardon, has significantly been emaciated. No thanks to inflation, of course, in double digit on one hand. And also, you may also want to look at what exchange rate is saying. So the truth is that you still need to buy a bag of rice because of your family size for one month. When we say put belts, buy belts, and you are are having austerity measure. But that does not mean you must not eat. You still want to eat, you still want to buy rice. Uh, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago, a bag of rice was between 15 to 18,000 naira. Today, uh, using the same naira as medium of purchase, you now have a bag of rice for about 30,000 naira. So the demand for, for, for money and using the same quantity will, will increase significantly. So we, we should be worried. And that in itself is inflation. And that's about 100% in about five years. When you look at the average inflation in five years, it's about 20%. So we should be worried because inflation is really very evident. And we are also hoping that by 2022, we're going to be seeing reduced inflation. But as at the last report, rather than going down, what you have seen is that inflation even increase marginally. All right. Uh, you're looking at you know, some of these fintech companies. You think they've also contributed to this? You see... Uh, uh, credit from uh, fintechs actually went up. Fintech, uh, fintech has contributed to uh, increasing credit, especially to the private sector, because it became relatively easy for people to access credit from from organized uh, financial sector. If you unorganized financial sector where you have loan charge, we well, I don't know if you have received call that somebody you know somewhere somewhere has, has borrowed money and refused to pay I actually back. received the call uh, like that uh, this morning. That, 
I received the call like that this morning. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have seen loan sharks develop every day because of growth in technology. And, and yeah, so that, that in itself has improved or increased credit that we have. And you know, when you give credit, it will also increase money supply. Because when the individual is paying back, definitely will not pay back the exact amount it gave, uh, it, it collected, uh, and facility was loan. So it's going to come with interest, if you like. All right, so, you know, what's the solution here? You know, how do we mop up this excess liquidity without stifling growth? Well, uh, in economics, is a trade-off. If you uh, increase monetary policy rate on one hand, you are going to, it is expected that after a long time, you'll be seeing reduced uh, growth. You'll be seeing reduced growth rates. So if you, if you tighten excess, uh, if you tighten uh, MP, MPR from maybe 11.5 back to about 14%, it would definitely have impact on the GDP. So you ask ourselves, what do we want? Do we want reduced growth? And uh, when you have reduced growth, that may have implication on job. Uh, even though you will see inflation reduce marginally or depending on uh, the result of the policy. So that's on one side. On the second side, do we continue to battle with this inflation and continue to battle with other things? I think Nigerian problem is just is beyond just adjusting NPR. We have fundamental issues with our economy, and this has to be resolved uh, among trade policies and implementation, fiscal policy, especially fiscal authority, beyond paying, uh, what do we call our contractors, we should buy our fiscal expenditure to growth and to development of the country. And more importantly, we also have significant problem, meaningful problem, and we have, we have, we have quantum problem uh, with our trade policy. We are not exporting enough, and in, 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 in instances where we are exporting, most of our exports and they are having implications. Because right. what is driving money supply also can be traced to, to okay. the quality of Naira that we have, as I explained earlier. Yes. All right, uh, Mr. Paul Ali, thank you so much. Senior economists, SBM professionals, thanks for coming on the program this morning.